Hi everyone, I'm Debbie Roberts, owner and financial advisor at Property Apprentice. Join us today for the Week in Review, where I talk about current events for the everyday property investor and home buyer. Our topics for this week, first up from the New Zealand Herald on the 13th of June, thousands of first home buyers have their deposits wiped out. Second topic from News Hub on the 12th of June, households struggling to save or cope with unexpected bills, Kiwi Bank report reveals. Third topic from One Roof on the 12th of June, Tony Alexander, the return of the housing market slump, who's to blame? Topic number four, interest.co.nz on the 10th of June, residential building cost inflation dropped to 1.8% in 12 months to May this year, from 4.9% in the 12 months to December 2023. And topic number five from the New Zealand Herald on the 11th of June, $55,000 back pocket hole, cut off nearing for government KiwiSaver contribution. So first up from the New Zealand Herald on the 13th of June, thousands of first home buyers have their deposits wiped out. More than 8,500 first home buyers who purchased at the market peak now own properties worth less than they paid, straining their budget. CoreLogic data reveals that 81% of homes bought by first home buyers between October 2021 and March 2022 have declined in value. About 18% 2,000 buyers have properties worth over 20% less, likely erasing their equity. In Auckland, where 42% of the devalued properties are located, that's accounting for 36% of sales during that period. In Wellington, the figure is 10.8%. Of the homes still worth more than 20% below their purchase price, two-thirds are in Auckland and 18.8% are in Wellington. CoreLogic's head of research, Nick Goodall, noted that prices have risen slightly, but not enough to recover lost value yet. He emphasised that losing money on homes isn't problematic unless circumstances change, like death, divorce or job loss, affecting about 1% of people annually. Most buyers intended to hold their properties long term, and as long as they can keep up with mortgage payments, they should eventually see value growth. Previous cycles suggest recovery could take five to seven years or more. For some, the value drop makes mortgages harder to service. Banks often charge higher interest rates for low equity, low equity loans. A margin might add 0.75 percentage points for deposits between 5 and 10 percent, or 0.5 points for 10 to 15 percent deposits. This, combined with already high rates and living costs, can strain incomes ear further. It is important to point out that banks don't usually go back and add this retrospectively. So that would mean that if you took out the mortgage originally as a low equity loan with value drops, you wouldn't have been able to remove those margins. Whereas if values had increased, then you could have gone back to your mortgage advisor or bank and asked them to remove that low equity margin. During the next boom, many of these homeowners expected to refinance out of these higher rates quickly. Now extended payments on these terms amidst rising costs can be burden burdensome. Kiwi Bank estimates it would take over eight years to build 20% equity with a 10% deposit if prices remain static. Although to be fair, chances of that happening, it would be the first time as far as we've got records going back with the property market for that to happen. CoreLogic's latest data shows 221 out of 938 suburbs experienced at least a 1% value drop over the past three months, with 10 suburbs dropping by at least 5%. It is important to point out that winter does tend to have slower property markets, and we do often see drops in values, followed by another month where, where gains again occur. Conversely, 253 suburbs saw a gain of at least 1%, with 8 up by at least 5%. Hearn Bay remains the most expensive suburb, with a median value of $3.41 million. Calvin Davidson, Goodall's colleague, attributes the market stagnation to affordability pressures, high mortgage rates, increased listings and rising unemployment. He believes tax cuts and looser LVR rules may not significantly boost the market, and the removal of first home grants and DTI limits being imposed might not severely impact it either. Davidson predicts a subdued market for the rest of 2024. 
So the property market is one of those things that it is hard to predict what's going to happen because things can turn quite quickly. I'm certainly not expecting massive increases in value over the next little while. But as I said, things can change in quite a short time frame with the property market. Uh, I'm expecting that the property market will stay relatively subdued until we see interest rates coming down, which will make lending a little bit easier and will probably entice a few more people to enter back into the property market, either as home buyers or investors. However, those of you that are active at the moment, uh, it is a pretty good time to be buying because there's plenty of choices available for you. Second topic for this week in review from News Hub on the 12th of June, households struggling to save or cope with unexpected bills, Kiwi Bank report reveals. In a recent report by Kiwi Bank, it's been revealed that many New Zealand households are struggling to save money or handle unexpected expenses due to the high cost of living. The Kiwi Bank State of Savings Index shows that while 59% of respondents have a budget and 41% save regularly, 30% would face difficulty covering an unexpected $500 bill without borrowing, selling items, or using a credit card, which is concerning. Kiwi Bank CEO Steve Jerkovich highlighted that while some New Zealanders are successfully setting financial goals, a significant portion remain vulnerable to financial shocks. The report also indicates that a substantial number of households save less than $100 a month outside of their KiwiSaver contributions. The data is particularly concerning for women and for those under the age of 30 who are more likely to be struggling with savings due to the high living costs. Djurkovic pointed out that financial resilience is becoming more crucial as people are now six times more likely to cite the cost of living as a major financial concern compared to issues like divorce or job loss. Spending on entertainment and retail has sharply decreased, reflecting the tighter financial conditions. Despite these challenges, Djurkovic notes that upcoming interest rate cuts by the Reserve Bank may boost confidence, though they are unlikely to provide immediate financial relief for households especially if you're on a fixed interest rate and you want to wait until that fixed rate expires. So don't fix long term at the moment. Get advice from your mortgage advisor. The survey conducted by Talbot Mills included 1,046 participants and has a margin of error of plus or minus 3.1%. If you'd like to learn more about investing in property, join me at one of our free events called How to Succeed with Property Investing. I'll discuss strategies for successful investing from my perspective as a financial advisor and experienced property investor. And these events are available live, online, or in person in our office in Allesley at Auckland. Check out propertyapprentice.co.nz for upcoming dates and register today. We don't sell property, so it's all about increasing your knowledge to reduce your risk. If you've already been to one of our free events and you'd like to find out more about how we can help you to reach your financial goals, You can also book a no-obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, via the website, propertyapprentice.co.nz. Third topic for this week in review from One Roof on the 12th of June, Tony Alexander, the return of the housing market slump, who's to blame? Buyers are pulling back from the market, which is unlikely to rebound until interest rates decrease. The New Zealand house prices rose by an average of 0.9% per month between July and November 23 according to the Real Estate Institute of New Zealand. Since then, prices have declined by an average of 0.3% per month, and various housing indicators suggest a continued downturn in the residential real estate market. The latest spending plan survey revealed that a net 10% of respondents are delaying or cancelling plans to buy a house. That's the second weakest result on record, compared to a net 4% stepping back at the start of the year. Real estate agents are seeing a notable drop in first home buyer activity. The proportion of agents reporting an increase in first home buyers has plummeted from a net 55% at the start of the year to just 5% by the end of May. Young buyers are particularly hesitant, likely due to job market insecurities and the absence of government or reserve bank interventions seen in past downturns. Forecasts predicting the unemployment rate will rise from 4.3% to over 5% 
are also deterring some potential buyers. Investors who seem to have been retreating since March 2021 are also stepping back further. The spending plan survey showed a net 19% of respondents shelving investment property plans, up from a net 9% at the beginning of the year. Additionally, a net 25% of real estate agents reported fewer investors looking to buy, compared to a net 22% seeing more investor interest earlier in the year. The market has cooled significantly since the sales and price surge in mid-2023. Increased job concerns, a surge of new vendors and a deteriorating economic outlook amid rising living costs, including higher council rates and insurance premiums, have all contributed to this cooling. When will the market improve? Not until interest rates drop, which might happen late this year, when the Reserve Bank adjusts its monetary policy, currently deemed too tight, a reversal from the too loose policies of 2021 to 2022. Economic missteps by the central bank in 2021 or the debt increase from 2017 to 23 could result in business or job losses this year. Now, just to be fair for a bit of balance, it's interesting that this survey has shown these results. It is normal for winter months to be slower market activity and often because of that, especially when there's a large number of supply, we do see decreases in, in prices. I'm certainly not expecting this to be an ongoing thing. In fact, we are seeing more and more people applying for lending, purchasing properties. You know, So we're actually seeing the opposite. Although, to be fair, we do deal mostly with first-home buyers or property investors. So it could be just that core portion of the market saying, to heck with it, let's just do this because eventually interest rates will drop and prices will pick up again. Topic number four from interest.co.nz on the 10th of June, residential building cost inflation dropped to 1.8% in 12 months to May this year, from 4.9% in the 12 months to December 2023. Cost pressures in the building industry are continuing to ease, according to the latest figures from QV's Cost Builder database. Cost Builder tracks pricing trends for over 60,000 building industry costs. It found that the average cost of building a three-bedroom home in major centres increased by 1.8% in the 12 months ending, to, ending in May. The data indicates that price increases are slowing further, with costs rising 0.3% over the three months ending in May. The rate of building cost inflation is certainly on the wane, said QV cost builder spokesman and quantity surveyor Martin Bissett. This will be welcome news to all those who are currently contemplating or pricing up new building projects. The biggest price increase over the three months to May was for exterior walls and finishes. In contrast, framing costs declined by 0.7% due to a reduction in the price of structural steel. Site preparation costs also fell by 1.6%. Significant economic headwinds continue to blow, which has drastically reduced activity across the wider construction sector, Bissett said. For consumers, the upside of that is that there are fewer capacity constraints and their contractors are having to put their best price forward in order to win work. So my advice to you is if you're looking to get renovations done, it's a pretty good time to find some tradies to do those jobs for you. A lot of tradies are looking for work at the moment. Uh, and certainly if you're looking at purchasing property, plenty of choice and uh, not much competition from other buyers and not much chance of house prices increasing in the next week or two. Topic number five, from the New Zealand Herald on the 11th of June, $55,000 back pocket hole cut off nearing for government KiwiSaver contribution. KiwiSaver members may be missing out on up to $55,808 in additional retirement savings by not making their minimum contributions, according to an analysis by Westpac New Zealand. For every dollar members contribute to KiwiSaver up to $1,042.86 annually, the government matches 50 cents, totaling a maximum contribution from the government of $521.43 per year per KiwiSaver. Based on projections from the Westpac Retirement Calculator, a 25-year-old investing in a growth fund with an average annual return of 4.5% and receiving the full government contribution each year could accumulate an extra $55,808 by the age of 65. 
a 35-year-old in a balanced fund earning 3.5% annually could see an additional 26917 while a 45-year-old in a conservative fund at 2.5% might gain an extra $13,319. Nigel Jackson, CEO of BT Funds Management New Zealand, which provides the Westpac KiwiSaver scheme, emphasised the benefit of making voluntary contributions to ensure receiving the full government match. He noted that even small annual investments up to $1,042.86 can significantly enhance future financial security. Despite financial hardship withdrawals from KiwiSaver increasing significantly in recent years, with withdrawals surpassing $209.5 million from July 23 to March 24, Jackson stressed the importance of ongoing contributions for long-term financial well-being. My advice is, if you haven't ever received financial advice about your KiwiSaver, it's a pretty good time to get that. If you're a client and property apprentice, we can do that for you at no extra charge. So get in touch. Uh, if you're not a client of Property Apprentice yet, what are you waiting for? Because we'll look after you in all sorts of different areas. Learning about property investing regularly keeps investors informed about market trends, rule changes, and new ways to invest their time, money, and energy. If you want to stay up to date, join me at one of our free events called How to Succeed with Property Investing. During these two-hour workshops, I cover recent property market data, and as an experienced property investor and a financial advisor, I'll be sharing valuable insights and expert tips to help you on your journey. Our free events cater to all levels of property investors and first-home buyers. I'll also tell you more about how we help our clients to achieve their financial goals. So if you're interested in finding out more about how we can help you, visit propertyapprentice.co.nz today to secure your spot and register for one of our free events. Alternatively, we're if you're ready to book a session to find out if we're right for you as a coaching company and a financial advice provider, book a no-obligation phone call or meeting with my husband, Paul Roberts, through our website. And remember, no conflict of interest because we don't sell property. Thanks for listening.